Hey guys, Mr. Wood here and uh, back for last short lesson, just kind of going over what we went in over in class on Wednesday and Thursday. And, uh, whenever you guys watch this, either before or after fall break, <clears throat> we do have a little assignment due, but I didn't do jokes today, so here we go. I've only got one. Yikes. What happens when you cross a witch and a clown? A brouhaha. That's not bad, not great. Okay, so I want to review what we went over in class. And we're in the middle of chapter four. We to, today and in class, our last class, we learned about the periodic table. So let me just review for you guys again what is due uh, when you guys come back from fall break. So right here. So this is the reading. And these are the problems from the book. There isn't any worksheet. And we'll have, again, another little quiz. And we are getting done. I think the day we come back, we will finish the chapter. We're going to do a lab on Wednesday, Thursday. And then probably the following week, we'll be ready for our uh, test. So let me just review real quick some of the things we talked about in the notes. And, and again, I want to go through this fairly quickly. But on your periodic table, remember we talked about the atomic number right here, which is the elements. It's the elements license plate. Every element has its own unique, I can't see that, its own unique atomic number. So the atomic number is connected to the, to the symbol. And the atomic mass, like we did problems, even on the quiz, where you, this is a weighted average of all the isotopes of the element. So then we talked about these big, broad categories on the periodic table. And the first one were the metals over here and the non-metals. So, and it even tells us right here, these are the non-metals. And up here it says these are the metals. And the staircase line distinguishes those. And you gotta remember hydrogen here is the only element to the right of that line that is a non-metal. Okay, so we've got metals and non-metals. You can see there's a lot more metals than non-metals. And remember elements right on the line are called the semi-metals or the metalloids meaning they kind of have properties uh, like both. And the one big exception there is aluminum. It is a metal. So, so we've got metals, non-metals. Then we talked about, and even here I had you, I said I, if I were you, I'd write in the word period. So going across, these are periods. And it doesn't mean that they have anything in common with each other. They're just in the same row, said to be in the same period. Elements in the same up and down column are said to be in the same group. And we talked about those. We talked about this one right up here. This is the noble gases right up here above helium, the noble gases. Uh, here we wrote halogens. These are called the halogens F in that column. Over here, these are the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals. And elements in the same column or group or family, they do have properties in common. And then the middle section of the periodic table is called the the cross section, if it looks kind of like a lopsided H, that crossbar, those are the, called the transition metals. Okay, and then one thing, and it doesn't show it on here, and I can come over here, but remember I said the color on the periodic table on the wall, the color up here tells you the state. And so the upper right-hand section, those are in red, those are gases, elements that are in black are solids. And elements that are in blue are liquids. And so there's only two of those. It's number 80, mercury. It's the one famous liquid metal. And then element 35, bromine, which, again, is kind of difficult to see that. And one thing I didn't mention, I know in cohort A, but elements that are in gray, kind of that, that bottom row, this row right here, this row right here, if, if an element is in gray, it's synthetically made. Uh, in class. So the color, and again, I will always let you guys use that periodic table. And then the final thing were the diatomic elements. We said elements that come in twos. And so, and most of these, these are gases. And so, so what I told you, the way I was remembered, if you start in the seventh box, nitrogens, if you start in the seventh box, nitrogens box, and you write the number seven, so that's N-O-F-C-L-B-R-I, and then H. you got to remember H, too. Then those are the diatomic elements. They, they come in two. So N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and H2. Another way to remember that is this 
saying uh, <clears throat> called Brinkelhoff. Okay, so a couple problems real quick I wanted to go over. Number 45, it says the characteristic properties that distinguish the metallic elements from the non-metals. Well, metals are solids except for mercury. They are flexible. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. So non-metals are all the opposite of that. They're not all solids. They are not good conductors of heat or electricity, and they uh, are not flexible. Okay, so that's number 45. Uh, we talked about 46. 48 uh, gives several examples of non-metallic elements that occur in the gas state. So again, the elements that are red on the periodic table. Number 49, under ordinary conditions, only a few elements occur as liquids, and I just told you that, mercury, the, the famous liquid metal, and bromine. Uh, 58, it says the uh, elements of group eight, and that was referring to our periodic table. When they're talking about our periodic table, group eight, they're talking about the noble gases. That's what they're talking about there. So they're talking again about the noble gases, group eight. And so number 58, why are the elements of group eight referred to as noble or inert? And inert means unreactive. And uh, that's because they don't react with anything. And we're going to explain that later. It has to do with their number of electrons. So, so 58 is they don't combine with anything else there. 59 molecules of nitrogen and oxygen. What goes in the blank on 59 is diatomic, diatomic. Okay, and I think the rest of these you guys can, can, uh, can work on. Let me go back to 43. This will be the last one. How are the elements ordered? The elements are ordered based on atomic number. So it's an increasing atomic number. Actually, the first periodic table that was made was by a Russian chemist about 100 and 50 years ago named Dmitry Mendeleev, and he ordered the elements based on atomic mass. And uh, he had a bunch of holes, a bunch of undiscovered elements, and he said, well, there ought to be an element that has these properties that fits right in here. And sure enough, there was many elements that he nailed. But this periodic table is not based on atomic mass. It's based on atomic number. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Hopefully you can relax over fall break, but be ready to go when we get back. And have a good fall break. I'll see you when we get back.